In the last video, we talked a bit about the electromagnetic spectrum and what animals saw different parts of the electromagnetic spectrum. So, for example, we said that humans can see about 380 to roughly 700 nanometers in terms of the spectrum, whereas some bees, for example, have less, so they can see smaller. So they might be able to see 300 to 600 nanometers because that's your UV, your UV range is 300, so they can see UV light. Whereas some pit vipers might have you know, 400 to 700 plus, because 700 plus would mean infrared, and they can see infrared. So we have different animals having different types of spectrums that they can see. We humans can see only the visible light, which is about 300 to 700. Now the question is, what this dot point actually asks us is, why do humans not have UV vision? And why do other animals have different types of vision? So the dot point says students will use available evidence to suggest, so we have to give just some reasons, suggest reasons for the difference in range of electromagnetic radiation detected by humans and other animals. So if we look at the actual evolutionary tree, what you could see is we've got the vertebrates. So these are the ones which have a backbone, right? Vertebrates have a backbone. That would be the fish the actual reptiles, amphibians, mammals, birds, etc. And then the invertebrates, which are your insects, your spiders, and everything else. These are your invertebrates here. Insects, um, spiders, crabs. These have no backbone. These have no spine. Um, but what we find interesting is, for example, all animals, sorry, all most insects, or, or more, yeah, most or all insects, have UV vision, right? most insects do. Most insects have UV. And um, when it comes to most birds, most birds have, or all birds actually, pretty sure all birds have it. All birds have UV vision. There are even some reptiles that have UV vision, right? The gecko was one example. But we mammals, most mammals, there are actually some mammals that, that might have UV vision, but most mammals, have no UV vision, right? So most mammals have have no UV vision. So the question is not why do we have UV vision, but the question is why have we lost it? Right? We used to have it. I mean, we've evolved from some of the, these common ancestors here and in here. So insects and, and all these other, many of these other vertebrates have UV vision, but we seem to have lost it at some stage. And the question would be why would we have lost it? And some an answer to this might be because um, maybe we don't really need, so maybe UV vision isn't that important. And by having less good UV vision, we can have really well-defined color vision, right? So apes and humans have really good color vision, which means we can see color really clearly, much better than most of the other animals. And that could be a result of maybe having lost UV vision, so we can be focused on having really good color vision. So we can see it really clearly. So this would, this would be the first step, you know, knowing that, okay, if we might have lost UV vision at some point, but why do we have we lost it? That could be because we want to focus on color vision. But why do other animals still have it? What's their point? What's the purpose of having these different types of visions that they have? As first of all, again, we mentioned UV vision comes because of these UV receptors. So remember how we have cones. Cones are our photoreceptors. So we have a green cone, we have a red cone, and we have a blue cone, and these combined give us our actual visible light spectrum, right? So that's, these give us our visible light spectrum that we can see, at 380 to about 700 nanometers. Now these insects might have, they might have some of these cones, so let's say they have a green and a blue cone, so they can see some color vision, but on top of that, it might have a different kind of receptor, which would be called the UV receptor. And we know that most insects have these, as this would be a UV receptor, which could be found in the eye of an actual animal, uh, insect, sorry. So bees are obviously insects, and they have pretty well-defined UV vision. And birds are not insects, but they also have really good UV vision. Now, what could be the reason why they might have that UV vision? All right, so again, if we look at, at a flower, this is a flower from a human point of view. This is what a human would see if they look at a flower. Whereas if a bird or a bee looks at a flower, this is more what they see. So they can actually see different kind of colors that we can't see. And 
one way that we can look at this is for a bird or a bee, this might be a bullseye kind of kind of image, right? So they might look at a flower and they can see kind of a place to go. Like they get told focus on this area. Right? It's like a it's like a landing zone. Because birds and bees often they go for pollen. So they want to have some pollen as their food, which is just produced by plants inside the flower, right? inside the middle of the flower. So by having UV vision, it kind of guides them to that point. Like the flower looks different for these different animals. So it guides them to that point and they get their pollen. Uh, we don't really hunt pollen that way, so we might not need to have that kind of mechanism. But birds and bees, much of their food comes from pollen. So that's why it'd be really good for them to have UV vision, and they do it, and we don't. Right? So that could be one reason why animals have UV vision, is to be able to see different patterns, which allow them to get food which they need for their survival. Now, that's for UV vision. On the other hand of the spectrum is the infrared, right? So this UV vision is here. This is UV means ultra, and V means violet. So violet is this color here. And ultraviolet means the extreme version of it, so that's more on that spectrum. Whereas infrared, infra red is here. Infrared would be infra means below, so it's below red. And this yeah is kind of that 700 nanometers plus range. And some examples of animals that can see it would be the pit viper snake, and that's a snake which often hunts at night, and a fire beetle which we'll go over in a second as well. So this, for example, this is the head of a snake, and you can see nostrils, this would just be the openings, that we have also have nostrils, but you can see this, it's called a pit hole. And a pit hole is just a small opening where they actually have these infrared receptors. So they have their infrared receptors in that hole in there, which obviously we don't have these receptors, but you can imagine that lots of receptors inside that hole. So all of the actual infrared radiation comes and gets collected in that hole itself and then it gets an image of the actual radiation that comes in. So the pit viper snake does that. So why, why might it want to be doing this? What benefit might it have? Well, if you think about an actual animal, if this animal, for example, if it's hunting at night, if the pit viper snake is hunting at night, and a mouse comes, this mouse would produce warmth, would produce heat, and the heat is transferred, transformed into infrared. So if the snake receives that signal from the heat, in form of infrared and make, can make a sig can make an image in its mind of it. It can see these the in the dark. It can see an actual rat, and it can hunt it. Right, so it often does it for food. It might be doing it for food to gather food because it's quite effective at making sure anything that is has produced heat it can see. And even if the mouse can't see the snake, the snake can see the mouse and it can just hunt it and kill it. Now, fire beetles are an interesting case as well. These fire beetles, they produce their offspring, so their babies, are, offspring means just babies, their offspring are produced after a bushfire. So they need to have a bushfire that destroys the, the trees, and then they can lay their eggs in that devastated forest. So the fire beetles will be able to see the infrared coming from a bushfire, as if there's a bushfire somewhere, they can follow the actual fire, and then once it's gone, they lay their eggs, and then they can actually reproduce. So these fire beetles have infrared vision to be able to follow fire from far away and then lay their eggs. So I'll quickly go over dopamine again. It suggests reason for difference in range of electromagnetic radiation detected by humans and other animals. So yeah, for humans, we have only visible light spectrum. Maybe that's maybe it's for us to be able to focus on color vision because we have really good color vision because we only have that, that very narrow spectrum. Whereas, for example, birds and bees might have UV vision so they can see different types of patterns, and that allows them to be able to, for example, hunt pollen, an example of bees and birds. Now, in terms of infrared vision, that's what be your pit viper snake and your fire beetle. The pit viper snake might have infrared vision to be able to hunt better at night, because it can see things that have produced warmth quite clearly, and it can hunt them. The fire beetles might have infrared vision to be able to find um, forest fires and lay their eggs after, after the forest fire is gone. But I hope that was useful.